Hi everyone. In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how we can use Hexagon Designer to automate our part setup for manufacturing. So in this example, I have got a tombstone fixture and what I have are six jaws, six vices, where I want to add six different parts for manufacturing. Now in a folder here, I have got all six different parts and they all need a bit of work doing to them. So they are ready to go and get manufactured. Okay. So we need to fill some holes. We need to create a, uh, a stock model and we need to create a, a relevant work plane for each one of these. So I'm going to use the automation tools available in designer to enable me to do this with as few steps as possible. I'm going to start by launching the macro explorer and you'll see that I have two separate macros here. I'm going to start with the semi automated workflow so you can see the process and see the steps um, which take place in order to get the parts positioned in the correct locations. So I'm going to run that macro. This opens up this custom command which is where I need to navigate to where my parts are stored. Okay, so these are all my different parts and I'm just going to load the insert to start with and we say open. So as soon as I right click, you'll see that that part has been loaded. Okay, a stock's been created and a relevant work plane has been created and the holes have been capped. Okay, uh, so if I navigate to the structure tree, you'll see that we've got some capping uh, holes here, some capping surfaces. So let's go back to my row explorer and my full window and we can see what the custom workflow is requesting of me. And that is to select a destination work plane. So I'm going to zoom into this clamp here and select the center work plane. You can see immediately the part is posi positioned in the correct location. And now I have another custom command, which is prompting me to select the relevant elements and faces in order to clamp the vice jaws around the stock model. So I can select my first jaw and a relevant face. Then I need to select the face that we're moving it to, my second jaw and the relevant face. And again, the jaw, uh, the face that we are clamping it to. And when I apply this command, you can see that those jaws clamp tightly against the stock model. And now I'm prompted to create a machining work plane. So I'm just going to, to zoom in here and I want to make sure that I have a work plane created on the top of the part like so. So now this macro is cycling round again. Okay. So it's asking for my next part that I want to load. So I can open it up. I can choose a, a, a different part. For example, let's choose this guy. We'll open him up and apply. Again, you were able to see hopefully that um, the part's been loaded, the stock's been created, and also the capping faces have been created as well. Now I need to select my destination work plane again. So I'm going to zoom into this clamp and select a destination work plane and apply that. Now I need to close my jaws. So I need to select my first jaw and face and reference face of the stock and then do exactly the same on the other side. And I'm using the slow left click to make sure I can select the relevant faces underneath my mouse cursor. So in this case, the jaws actually widened to, to move and clamp around the stock. So again, I want to create that machining, uh, my machining work plane. 
and this time I can pop him at the bottom left corner of my stock and apply that. And essentially we could keep loading um, more parts and going through this semi-automated workflow in order to get our um, fixture and part all set up ready for manufacturing. Okay. Um, but I'm not actually going to, to do that in this instance. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open my fixture again. And I'm going to show you how that's all been linked together to create a more automated workflow. So here I've loaded the same fixture. What I'm doing differently is loading a different macro, running a different macro, which is the automate, automatic part setup. Um, so again, I need to navigate to the folder where I've got all of my parts. This time I'll start from the top and go down. So I've got all six parts. I can load that one. You can see it's created and then it's automatically been positioned in the first clamp. Now I'm prompted to launch the second one and we can say OK. So my second part has automatically been positioned and I can keep doing this until I have very quickly got all six of my parts set up with the correct capping surfaces, correct stock models, all of the jaws clamped in the right positions. And you can see that I'm doing it quite automatically with as fewer clicks as possible. So you can imagine the number of uh, manual steps required to do this if we weren't using the automation capabilities the JavaScript macro capabilities inside Designer. Okay, so we've been very quick and easy to do our part setup. And then of course, we've got the capabilities to send that directly to Hexian Cam. So the macro is finished. I've set up all six different parts in each device and clamp the stock around them. If I go to my structure tree and just have a quick look, uh, all the covers are placed on, on a single layer. All the bodies, all the parts are placed on another layer. All the stocks been placed on another layer. And then if I wanted to create my machining work planes, I could do that now. So that was a nice, quick and uh, straightforward demonstration to show how we can use the automation tools available in Designer to speed up, produce manual repetitive processes and get our parts ready for manufacturing quicker. Thank you for watching.